Good morning, Pastor Ed here from Hope Lutheran Church in Freehold, New Jersey, uh, with daily devotions for Friday, uh, December the 17th, uh, 2021. It'll be a week, today's a week from Christmas Eve. Ugh, hard to believe. Uh, anyway, we're going to continue our um, look at uh, what was our major reading this past Sunday, Isaiah 55, uh, 1 through 13. We'll be looking specifically at verses... Uh, uh, 8 and 9 this morning. Um, but before we get into that, let's begin with the service of responsive prayer, also known as suffrages. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness. O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He redeems my life from the grave and crowns me with mercy and loving kindness. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us pray. God of restoration, save us when we find ourselves spiritually thirsty. Help us walk your road with your purpose, strengthened by your living water. Amen. That prayer that we've been using all week, you know, praying to the God of restoration, the God who restored uh, his people after the Babylonian exile, people who were spiritually thirsty, who felt cut off um, uh, from God, and God is now, uh, through the prophet, is, is telling them that I didn't go away, um, I'm still here for you, and, and um, you need to, uh, as we heard yesterday, um, you know, incline your ear, come to me, listen to me, so that you shall live. Well, actually, I, I was incorrect. I said verses 8 and 9. It's actually verses 6 through 9 uh, that we're going to look at this morning. And they go like this. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So again, we heard yesterday about, you know, incline your ear, come to, uh, come to me, listen to me that you may live. Uh, the, the exhortation here is, you know, seek the Lord. As one scholar said, uh, it begins with, a, verse 6 begins with a clear exhortation, seek the Lord while he may be found. In other words, uh, the time to return um, in order to enjoy God's blessings is now. Um, so as the people are at, at this uh, uh, pivotal moment in their history where they have the opportunity, that many of them have taken the opportunity to return home and they need to listen to God, they need to seek God. Uh, a fellow by the name of Ian Johnson talked about uh, how he used to play hide-and-seek with his children. Um, and part of the fun for him as a dad uh, was hiding where they could easily find him. 
In other words, the, the game was not so much to hide so that they would, couldn't find him at all and would get frustrated and get upset and cry or whatever. The thing was to hide in plain sight, hide in an obvious place. Um, and so his point is that God is like that. God hides in plain sight so that when we look for him, we may find him. And that's what Isaiah is saying. Seek the Lord while he may be found. It's not like seek the Lord. It's going to be a long, arduous journey and, and, and difficulty and, and you, you may succeed and maybe you won't succeed. No, seek the Lord while he may be found. He's, he's there. He's, he's waiting for you to find him. Call upon him while he is near. And then it kind of goes on to this idea that, um, you know, returning to God Certainly the people had strayed from God. It's the history of Israel. It's the history of, of all of us, of, of people of faith. We, we stray from God and we find ourselves in difficulty and trouble and, and we appeal to God for, uh, for help. And so, uh, you know, this is, had happened to them. It led to their exile in Babylon. Um, but, you know, it's not too late. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon while he is near. You know, uh, forsake your evil ways and and return to the Lord, and and keep in mind that you know your your thoughts are are not uh, our thoughts are not God's thoughts, and, and our ways are not God's ways. Um, there's a story, and I for those of you who are not necessarily uh, uh, sports fans, I apologize. Two two stories, real quick. One uh, about a football game um, uh, last week, I guess it was. Uh, it was a close game. I can't even remember who their opponents were, but the Pittsburgh Steelers were driving. Uh, at the end of the game for, I, I guess, a tying score, or I don't know whether they had an opportunity to, uh, to win the game. And, uh, you know, time was of the essence, and uh, they had a veteran quarterback by the name of Ben Roethlisberger. He completed a pass to a rookie, that's a first-year player, a wide receiver, uh, for a crucial first down. Um, but, you know, time is running out. There, there wasn't much time left. So the, the thing that you would normally do in that situation is, is immediately – you know, after you caught the ball and got tackled, get up, give the ball to the referee, the official, so they could place the ball and then either run a play immediately or the quarterback sometimes what they call spike the ball to stop the clock. Instead, this rookie receiver, he was all excited, you know, and he started, you know, gesturing, you know, I made the first down and, and the whole bit. Meanwhile, precious seconds are running off the clock. The point is that he was concerned only about his particular situation and, and celebrating like you would normally do maybe throughout the rest of the game but not in the last minute not not with time running out not with every second is, is you know is it counts and so afterwards you know that it was obvious that he did not understand um, as a rookie player he did not understand that his his catch you know was not the most important thing there it was important but they needed to to save time on the clock. There's a classic story from baseball. Again, apology for the uh, the sports um, uh, analogy, uh, but uh, Earl Weaver, who was the manager of the the Baltimore Orioles, had a rule. This was years ago that no one could steal a base unless they were given the the steal sign. Um, and this upset one of his players, Reggie Jackson, who was a big star, and he was a big star with the Yankees, Mr. October, and everything. Um, because Reggie Jackson thought, I know the pitchers, I know the catchers, I know well enough when I could steal um, and, and who he could steal off of. So one game he decided, decided to steal without being given the sign. Well, he got a good jump off the pitcher, he easily beat the throw to second base, and he jumped up from his slide and shook the dirt off his uniform. He smiled with delight, feeling that he had uh, vindicated, vindicated his own judgment to his manager who had this strict rule, but you don't do it unless I tell you to do it. But later on, um, later Jackson, uh, uh, Weaver took Jackson aside and explained why he had not given him the steal sign. Um, because the next batter was Lee May, who was another power hitting. In baseball, that means that they could drive the ball, you know, either a home run or far into the outfield to make, you know, to make it easier for runs to score. Um, he was their number two power hitter besides Jackson. So when Jackson stole second base, that meant that first base was now open, and the pitcher, the, the opponents, merely walked Lee May, took the bat out of his hands. Uh, so they still have runners on first and second. But then the next batter who was coming up was did not have very good luck against that particular pitcher, so they had to put a pinch hitter in for the next batter, uh, which meant that later on in the game, they you know he didn't have that ace pinch hitter to use. 
uh, in a crucial situation if he needed it. So again, Jackson only saw uh, a small piece of the picture, his, his uh, relationship to the pitcher and the, and the catcher, whereas the manager was watching the whole game. The point here is that we so often only see our little, little piece of, of the picture, um, but God sees the bigger uh, picture. And so God uh, directs us in ways that uh, may not always make sense to us, but are, are uh, uh, wise to obey, no matter what it is that we think that, that, that we may know. Um, again, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Um, Brad Henry talks about, uh, do you ever feel like you're adrift in an ocean with no clue how to get to shore? Um, a lot of times he says, here's another sports analogy, uh, we get a curveball and we're expecting a fastball. Point is, he says, we get frustrated when we try to figure God out. Without knowing it, a lot of times we even try to play God. Uh, but when we take matters into our own hands, we're playing God. When we judge someone, we're playing God. When we get into trouble in this life, it's typically when we compartmentalize God. Um, this means that we make decisions without asking or seeking God's uh, approval. We know that God is there, but often we're too busy to ask God, uh, pray to God about what we might do, what we should do. Again, we're playing God. In a strange way, we seem to think that, that our thoughts uh, are the same as God's thoughts, uh, that our wisdom is just as good as God's wisdom, uh, that our ways are just as good as God's ways. And that's not the case. Um, and so that's what the prophet is trying to impress on the people. Um, you know, you've been through a rough stretch here. Um, so listen for God. Respond to God. Seek God. He's, gonna, he's clearly making himself easy to find. Um, and, and, and keep in mind, you know, God's ways, because they're not your ways. Your ways kind of got you into trouble in the first place. Um, this is a number of years old, and I think they've probably done it since, but there's a, a fellow by the name of George Barna whose organization kind of um, surveys um, Christians about, you know, about different subjects, and he conducted a survey uh, a number of years ago now of uh, self-pronounced Christians and, and this is what they, he found out about the Bible. Um, these Christians who were surveyed, 48% uh, of them could not name the four Gospels. Almost half didn't know Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. 52% um, could not identify more than two or three of Jesus' disciples out of the 12. 60% of American Christians can't even name five of the Ten Commandments. 61% of Christians think that the Sermon on the Mount was preached by Billy Graham. 71% of American Christians think that God helps those who help themselves is a Bible verse, and it's not. Um, and so what he said, Americans revere the Bible, but by and large they don't know what it says. And because they don't know it, they become biblical literates. They don't know God's ways. You know, our ways are not God's ways. The way to know God's ways is to listen, to study, to reflect on God's word. Um, and so, the, you know, the problem is that, that here in the 21st century, um, uh, we're, we're, you know, kind of floundering, uh, floundering because we don't understand um, the basics of our faith. We're being fed junk food and don't feed themsel ourselves on the Word of God. Um, we're desperately in need of a solid diet of good food, which is God's Word, Scripture. Um, which again, if you go back to this Isaiah reading, you know, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? You labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Uh, is what the prophet said back in verse 2. But so often, you know, we don't do that. Um, and yet God is eager for us to find him. God... Um, um, you know, from the very beginning, the Jewish Sabbath on Saturday, the Christian Sabbath, which is now on Sunday because of Easter and the resurrection, there's an opportunity at least once a week to gather, uh, to listen to God. And yet, you know, so often there are all kinds of excuses uh, for why uh, we don't do that. So somebody once um, talked about uh, having a no-excuse Sunday at church. Uh, it goes like this, cots will be placed in the foyer who say that Sunday is my only day to sleep in. 
Uh, urine drops will be available for those with tired eyes from watching television too late on Saturday night. We'll have steel helmets for those who say the roof would cave in if I ever came to church. Blankets will be provided for those who think that the church is too cold and fans for those who think the church is too hot. We'll have hearing aids for those who say that the pastor speaks too softly and cotton for those who say he preaches too loudly. Scorecards will be available for those who wish to uh, uh, critique the service or the sermon. Um, for those who want to spend time with their family on Sunday, we assure you that your father will be in attendance. Um, there'll be TV dinners for those who can't go to church and also cook dinner at the same time uh, for the same day. Um, a whole section of the church will be devoted to trees and grass for those who like to seek God in nature. Uh, finally, the sanctuary will be decorated with both Christmas poinsettias and Easter lilies for those who've never seen the church without them. Kind of a little bit of a harsh indictment there, but you know I think the point is is clear. Um, seek the Lord uh, while He may be found, um, and and yet we don't we don't do that. We we squander our time and our resources on things that that don't matter. Um, instead of focusing on the things that do. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Um, that's the call of the prophet then, and it's equally valid and important for us today. Well, let's close this morning um, with Martin Luther's morning prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil, that in all our thoughts, words, and deeds we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours, that your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. The Lord Almighty order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. Well, have a great Friday and... Uh, Looking forward to concluding our look at Isaiah 55, 1 through 13, uh, as we focus on those final verses, 10 through 13, uh, tomorrow morning on Saturday. Till then, take care. Bye.